Hello Internet! In this video we are going to be returning to our elevator simulation thing. Um, in this video we are going to be trying to get three levels to load in this uh, scene. So we're going to have one level, this level, that has all of our like global objects. So in this case we're, we're trying to create an elevator that moves between multiple scenes. So this is going to have our elevator and it's going to have a bunch of other things. Um, what the other two scenes are going to be is unique instances. So different levels or floors of a building or whatever we're moving in. And so what we want to do is move between one and the other. So only one of them should be loaded at any time. Um, there's going to be a little bit of finickiness about that, but it should be fine. Um, really all we need to do is when we load, finish loading one level, unload the loaded one and vice versa. So you should be able to toggle between the two. Um, we're just going to pick up where we left off. So this has sort of been a series. Uh, if you haven't been following along, uh, we're going to be using some of the code from that. It It's going to add on to it, so you can probably pick up. But uh, if you're confused, go back to those previous videos and, and catch up from there. We're going to be ignoring the elevator. Um, if you're curious, it's a mechanism thing uh, that is animated. Why does that? OK, there we go. Um, it does animation stuff. We, we're going to ignore that. That's the next video. Um, making all both of these systems play well together is uh, probably going to actually be more complicated than what we're going to do in this video. Um, so we're going to ignore it for now. Um, but how this works is there is this load level script over on the right hand side. This is attached to the main camera. It can be attached to anything. All it does is loads a level. Um, so if we cut scene B and just do uh, load level, um, there's two of them there. I, that's from the experiment where we implemented this and I haven't cleaned it up. Um, but this loads scene B. And so over in the uh, inspector over here, or hierarchy view rather, uh, inspectors on the other side, um, you can see that we have scene B and that loads a sphere into our other uh, level. Unity keeps them separated for you so you can still see we have scene A with our main camera, our lights, uh, and our elevator. And then we have scene B which should just have a sphere in it. So what we need is we need a scene C and we're going to toggle between scene B and scene C. That is what we're trying to get to. So we can do this in a whole bunch of different ways, but what we're going to do is uh, create scene C and then move on from there. Uh, so I don't think we can just copy this. No, uh, but we can open scene B and save it as scene C. <laughs> um, so this is, this is cheating. Uh, but it works. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, scenes. And we'll just call it scene C. There we go. And now we have scene C. Uh, name changes. Everything's good. Uh, we're going to remove the sphere because the other, uh, the other scene has a sphere. We're just going to stick in a cube. That should be enough. Uh, and so there we go. We need to move this back to zero zero because that is where we actually want our objects to spawn because we're actually overlapping scenes. In this case, our scene a, our base scene has specific coordinates that it expects. If we use different ones in different scenes, they're not going to match up and things aren't going to look right. What we want is we want an object to appear in the center of that elevator and to swap out between the two. Um, we're trying to get it so that you can swap levels out um, so you can swap out the entire floor. Um, but this is the same effect. We're just doing it in a different way by not creating an entire level before we actually have a working effect uh, because that's more work and this is simple. So that that's that's why we're taking this direction. Um, so now we have this cube. That's the entire scene. What we need to do in order for this to work for unity to actually know that we want to use this scene, we need to actually add it to our build pipeline. Um, so build settings, and we're just going to add the open scene. This means that we can actually reference scene C. Uh, it can either be referenced by the full path, so scenes slash scene C, or it can just be uh, referenced by the, the ending name as long as there's no conflicts in the rest of your, your project. So scene C will work just fine for us. Um, you can also reference the, the build number, so 0, 1, or 2 in this case. Um, I don't do that often. I, it might be useful, but I, I, I yeah, I, I don't use it. So we're, we're going to stick to names because that's what I like. <laughs> and yeah, there we go. Uh, so scene C, let's go back to scene A because that's where all of the actual work is going to happen. Um, 
we shouldn't need to care what's going on in scene B or scene C for this to work. If we do, things have gone wrong. Um, ideally, they should handle their own state. If they are not, then our work just gets a lot more complicated because we have to test if all of those things can can actually do all the stuff. So we're, we introduce a whole bunch of conditions and triggers that we need to test before we can actually do our behavior. Um, and it also creates a lot of potential for things like leak through, for example. Um, we want to avoid that, so we are going to do our best to do that by um, trying to keep all the logic isolated to scene A and just having scene B and scene C be sort of the scenery stuff. Um, that's the plan. Um, again, there are lots of pitfalls that you can introduce here, especially once you start getting into more complex game behaviors. Um, we're not probably going to talk about those because they're going to be very specific to whatever you're trying to do. And so you, you're, the solutions are going to be unique. Um, but just keep that in mind that if you're unloading things, whatever they were doing, they're not going to do anymore. Um, so if you put important things that need to continue happening in one of your scenes and then unload it, uh, they're, they're, they're going to stop. So, so yeah, that, that's, that's something to keep in mind. Um, so that was a long tangent. We're going to go back to our main thing. Mainly, we're going to edit this load level. So what this needs to do is handle loading things. What it already does that it loads scenes asynchronously by starting a coroutine and then additively adding them to the scene. The problem is it does not unload the previous one. Um, so what we want is a more complex version of this. Um, so we are going to have a private string, uh, which is the loaded level name. And we'll just set this to string dot empty to begin with. Um, so you don't necessarily need to initialize this. Why? Oh, system isn't included. Okay. Weird. Uh, but string dot empty. There we go. <laughs> we didn't need system, but anyway, um, we're going to initialize this to string dot empty. So we have a case of nothing was loaded in that case. We probably should do something about that. We're not, but we're, we should, <laughs> um, then we need to actually test. So what this is going to do is at the end of this, we want to scene manager dot load or unload scene rather. I think that's what it's called. Unload scene async. And we want to unload that scene. We could do these simultaneously. Um, that's actually an option for us because the elevator doors will have closed. We could unload and load the new scenes simultaneously, or we could do them sequentially. Um, so the difference between that is if they're done sequentially, we are going to load in the additive scene and then unload this other scene. Um, there are potential downfalls to loading both of them additively um, or doing this concurrently, because let's say you have a physics object in one of the scenes um, and the other scene has an object where that physics object would normally fall. Uh, if you do this concurrently, if you're loading both of the scenes, weird things can happen because you are loading an object into another object. Uh, and one of those objects is programmed to actually react to, to, inter the, to those things. And it's not going to know the difference necessarily. It's not going to know that, oh, this is going away. Um, at least I don't think it will. Um, so to avoid this, I think the best way for us to approach this is actually to unload things first. Uh, I'm making this up as I go. So that's why I put that down there. And now we're changing our mind because I think this makes more sense. We are going to unload this and then load it. Uh, so loaded uh, level name. I think this should work. I don't actually know the signature for this method, but it seems to accept it. So we're going to call that good. Um, what, what are the overloads actually? Uh, so apparently we're going to decompile Unity and <laughs> see what see what goes on. Uh, what the scenes? Unload scene options. That could be useful. Um, let's ignore this for now, and and just pretend like this is fine. I think it should. I think this should do everything we need. So it should be good. Um, we are going to do var progress. Let's go unload progress. 
just so we have these. Uh, this is going to turn into a bit of a longer gross method. We could simplify this quite a bit, probably, but we don't actually know what we're writing yet, so we're not going to simplify things until we actually have something working. Uh, for me, refactoring things is sort of the, the last thing uh, you, you do. So, so you get your code working, you, you get it so that it does the behavior you want. Um, typically, you would write tests if you're doing that, and then you go back and refactor it and make it look nice and, and pull out all the unnecessary bits that you added because you were kind of figuring things out. Um, as we're, we're kind of exploratively developing this, um, we're going we're gonna to make mistakes. That's just how that happens. Uh, so th what this is going to do is it's going to unload the scene, wait for that to happen. So while it's not done, it's just going to yield and, and go in a loop. And then it's going to load the next scene afterwards. And we're doing that additively. So when we add a scene additively, that means we do not remove the previous scene. The reason we need to additively do this is because we want to keep that third scene, the main base scene, in our level. Um, if we didn't, we could just do a load level and it would unload the, previous, the current one and load the new one and handle everything for us. But we can't do that because we want, we're doing three scenes and we're trying to swap between two of the three. Uh, so, there we go. That is our loaded scene level. We actually need to assign the loaded level name equal to level name here. Um, and that should be good. There is uh, the weird things that can happen here. We are doing loaded level name after this. We might want to move this up here. Uh, because this is a coroutine, it can actually take multiple multiple frames, especially for long, large levels. This could take uh, seconds, I guess, and so or, or minutes in, in a really bad case. Um, but that entire time, this is going to be spinning. But we wouldn't have set the loaded level name yet. And so there is theoretically a possibility that we could try to reload a new level. Um, let's say the player is one of those people that gets into an elevator and hits all the buttons. Um, we could unload the, the current, the last scene we were in, and then start loading the new scene, and then they hit another button. What happens? Because um, we don't know the level, the previously loaded level name, because we hadn't assigned that yet. And so it might just get lost. Um, there's some weird things that can happen. We could throw some other protections on the, around this. We probably want to. Um, so if you are trying to load a scene, we may want to just lock this function and only do it once until it's fully completed. That may make sense. Uh, but again, you, you can figure that out. Uh, the, there's a lot of ways to approach this. Um, but I think this makes sense, so we're going to do that. Uh, the only other thing I want to do is add an if here. So if our loaded level name dot is what? Loaded level name string dot is empty. There is null or empty. All right, <laughs> cool. Uh, this is pretty much the same thing as doing string is equal to string dot empty, um, but it also handles null if we use that. Uh, for empty strings, I prefer using these methods typically rather than doing the equality signs. Um, I, I feel like they're less error prone and they're more explicit about what they're actually testing for but you can do whatever you want. Um, so there we go. Unloaded progress. That is wrong. That needs to go in our if. And so what this is doing is for the first time, because we don't actually have any, we just have our base level and you need to actually select what level you want to load into first. Um, that first time you're not going to actually have a scene to unload. And so this is going to skip over this function that first time. Uh, at least that's the, that's the plan. Uh, let's see. Let's see how wrong this, this code was. Uh, I think it should work, but you know, you never know. So yeah, here we go. Uh, let's start this. We have scene B and scene C that we can switch between. So scene B, <laughs> ignore the weird animation we were playing around, uh, should be able to be loaded like this. Nope, uh, you can't see that, but I can. Um, Argument exception scene to unload is invalid. Oh, oh, uh, we screwed this up. I, I screwed this up rather. Um, we, we, we need to uh, put a 
exclamation mark there. So that is a, if it's not null or empty, um, we we're only going to try to unload a level if there was a, wasn't a level. Uh, that's the opposite of what we want. Let's do it the right way. And here we go. <laughs> so hopefully this time it actually works. Uh, I'm glad it broke the first time because that means that it's going to work this time. <laughs> All right, cool. So we have a sphere that is scene B. We can see it over in the hierarchy. And if I go and type scene C here and load level, uh, the cube is in the floor, but that's fine. It's in the right place. I just need to move it up. Uh, but it did, it did work. We lost our scene B and we gained our scene C and we should be able to go right back. Uh, so if we do scene B and just right click load level, there we go. Uh, and we're swapping out and we're, we're removing the previous level. Um, so this is sort of a way to, uh, to do this. Uh, I think this is useful. Uh, we're going to, in the next video, we're actually going to try to make this elevator integrate with what this is doing, because right now it only works in the editor and that's not actually useful. Um, so we're going to maybe tie this to some UI buttons in our scene and start doing things like that uh, because we don't actually have a game here. There's no actual code. The literally the only, the only code we have is this load level script. Um, so we might need to add a character controller and some other things so that we can actually start playing around with this and see what happens when a character actually clicks a button in our elevator and tries to walk around those dynamically loaded scenes. Um, so that's, that's coming up. Uh, there might be a few videos before we get that far, um, but, but that's sort of where we're headed. So hopefully this is interesting. Hopefully it's something uh, you might want to use in your games, or at least it's helping you lear learn more about scene management and how to, how to asynchronously handle scenes. Um, again, this is something that I'm kind of learning on the fly, uh, and this seemed like a fun project to kind of learn it. So that's what we're doing. Um, if you have suggestions or, or you've used this and you have, have some things that we might want to look into, um, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd love to take a look, um, but that's it for now. So I guess until next video, see you internet.